Starliner returns without crew. This is absolutely a major failure for Boeing. Old issues with the spacecraft remain unresolved, and new problems have surfaced. Too many issues. So, what are the reasons behind this? And more importantly, what's the root cause of all Starliner's troubles? Let's find out in today's episode. Starliner has completed its test flight and landed safely, earning a bullseye landing evaluation from NASA. This brought a huge sigh of relief for both Boeing and NASA, and naturally sparked excitement among the public. However, it seems that many people have misunderstood the significance significance of Starliner's safe landing, assuming it meant a flawless mission. That's not exactly the case. Starliner's test flight faced some serious issues, particularly during re-entry. And frustratingly, Boeing was notably absent from the post-landing press conference, where they should have explained these newly emerged problems. One of the major setbacks Starliner struggled with was the malfunction of the service module's thrusters. To be fair, this wasn't a minor quick-fix issue, but rather a deeper design flaw within the spacecraft. To understand this better, let's take a look at the thruster compartment structure of Starliner, often called the doghouse. It doesn't take long to notice the problem. The thrusters and fuel lines are packed too closely together, with very little room to breathe. Compare this to past spacecraft. The Apollo service module and lunar module placed their reaction control system RCS thrusters outside of the spacecraft. The space shuttle had a forward RCS bay, and Starliner's direct competitor, SpaceX's Dragon, houses its RCS Draco thrusters in a sealed compartment. But the thrusters are positioned positioned well away from fuel lines, valves, and cables. These older spacecraft also focused on isolating the combustion chamber of their thrusters. They were heavily insulated, and the nozzles were designed larger to increase the area for heat radiation dissipation. The serious design flaw in Starliner's propulsion system should have been caught during the early stages of the design review. NASA acting as the overseer of the Starliner program, should have identified this unstable design much earlier. After all, the U.S. Space Agency has decades of experience in developing and operating crewed spacecraft. So after the uncrewed orbital flight test 2, someone at NASA should have spoken up, perhaps saying, we need to build a realistic doghouse model, identical to the flight hardware, and test it as an independent unit. However, this demand might never have been made. Why? It would have cost Boeing a lot of money, and the company was already bleeding financially with the Starliner project. Plus, it would have delayed Starliner's timeline, something neither NASA nor Boeing wanted. In theory, NASA is supposed to oversee the program from a higher level, even if they aren't directly involved in the design process. However, it seems NASA placed too much faith in Boeing's reports without conducting thorough independent checks. They, too, bear some responsibility for Starliner's struggles. This might explain why NASA has been relatively protective of Boeing in public statements, despite their internal disappointment with Starliner's performance over the years. To deal with the technical issue, Boeing and NASA opted opted for a breakout sequence during Starliner's separation from the International Space Station. This method essentially involved a minor tweak to Starliner's return process. It allowed the spacecraft to quickly detach from the ISS, minimizing time near the station and reducing the risk of collision. Additionally, it enabled the thrusters to operate in shorter bursts rather than continuously, lowering mechanical stress and preventing excessive heat buildup. While the public and media have focused on the thruster issues with Starliner's service module, which gets destroyed during re-entry, a new and more alarming problem has surfaced. Malfunctioning thrusters on the crew module itself, the section where astronauts reside during their return journey. It seems that no one, Boeing, NASA, or the astronauts, noticed the issue with the crew module thrusters until the spacecraft returned. When the system was activated, surprise, we have a brand new problem. Steve Stick, head of NASA's commercial crew program, seemed genuinely caught off guard when he revealed that one of the 12 thrusters used to orient the capsule during re-entry failed to ignite. This thruster simply did not respond to activation commands. Neither NASA nor Boeing knows the exact cause of the failure. It remains unclear whether the issue was a hardware or software problem, and whether the functioning of the remaining thrusters was down to luck. Well, at least the spacecraft could return safely thanks to the redundancy of the system. Losing one thruster wasn't enough to ruin the mission. But wait, there's more. Starliner's navigation system encountered significant issues during re-entry. The cause? Plasma interference. To understand this better, we can look at SpaceX's fourth Starship test flight. During that flight, there were moments when SpaceX's stream cut out due to signal loss from plasma interference. Similarly, in Starliner's case, plasma caused disruptions in the spacecraft's navigation system and communication link. 
While the temporary communication blackout caused by plasma was expected, the real surprise came when Starliner exited the plasma layer. When the navigation system rebooted, it couldn't accurately re-establish the spacecraft's position as expected. This led to a desynchronization between the navigation system and the spacecraft's onboard computers. I suspect the ground crew had to intervene manually. It seems they had to reset the ground-based computer systems to synchronize with Starliner's navigation system. Once again, the lack of automation and reliance on manual intervention not only increases the risk of human error, but also introduces dangerous delays in situations where every second counts. To make things worse, there's an important technical detail here. Starliner is equipped with three SIGI space-integrated GPS INS systems for triple redundancy. SIGI is a critical navigation and guidance system, combining GPS with an inertial navigation system, INS. However, in this mission, two of the three SIGI systems experienced glitches. This is an extremely serious situation. A spacecraft that finishes a mission relying solely on redundancy is definitely not a safe spacecraft. While backup systems are a key part of aerospace safety design, they're meant to handle rare, unexpected situations, not be the primary solution to systemic issues. The ongoing issues with Boeing's Starliner aren't just technical hiccups. They reveal deep and troubling problems in Boeing's business approach. The root of the problem lies in their risky shortcut strategy of outsourcing most of Starliner's critical systems. Instead of developing core technologies in-house, Boeing handed off these responsibilities to a tangled web of contractors and subcontractors. For example, Honeywell was responsible for the navigation system, Valve Tech for the valves, and Aerojet Rocketdyne for the thrusters, which are crucial for the spacecraft's movement and orientation. Each of these contractors had their own set of subcontractors, creating an incredibly complex supply chain with numerous layers of companies, some only handling a small part of a component. This complexity made quality control and process management a real nightmare. The consequences of this strategy have been catastrophic. When problems arise, and they have arisen frequently, Boeing finds itself completely lost. They spend weeks, even months, just trying to pinpoint the source of the issue. Boeing seems to struggle to even identify anyone actually responsible for anything. Boeing has clearly failed to replicate precisely what Starliner experienced during its test flights. They lack comprehensive data on the spacecraft's behavior in real-world conditions. This has left NASA in a difficult position as well. Despite deploying top experts in the field, NASA has struggled to ensure Starliner's safety due to the lack of transparency and the complexity of the supply chain, which has created a dense fog obscuring both Boeing's and NASA view. The driving force behind Boeing's strategy was clearly financial. By buying off-the-shelf products instead of developing them, Boeing aimed to cut R&D costs and speed up delivery. However, this approach has exposed severe flaws. Instead of saving money, it has led to numerous additional costs due to failures, delayed project timelines, and most critically, threatened Boeing's long-standing reputation in the aerospace industry. Boeing's mistakes started early. Instead of focusing on quality and control, they prioritized short-term profits. The result is that an ambitious space project has turned into an expensive lesson in project and supply chain management. To fix this, Boeing needs a complete overhaul of its approach. They must restructure their development process, enhance quality control, and most importantly, rebuild their internal capabilities. Only by doing this can Boeing hope to restore its standing in the space industry and regain the trust of the public and key partners like NASA. The problem is, they don't have much time left. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.